I'm going to bring the meeting to order before we get started. In accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, our first meeting of the new year, so happy new year to everyone, especially the folks listening at home. Thank you for kicking off your new year with uh, joining us for the meeting. Um, let's see. Anyone here for public comment? Please, to the podium and just state your name and address, please. Uh, Jeff Ewell, 427 Park Street, North Reading. Uh, first of all, Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, I hope that 2018 is as great as you want it to be. So I just want to share that with you. Also, uh, I want to just touch base. I couldn't help but notice uh, driving up uh, 28 that uh, if not all, most of the sidewalks were clear uh, or, or plowed or snow blowed, whatever the term might be. And uh, I don't know. Uh, if it was done by the town or if it was done by business or it was a combination, if someone could share that with me. But, I, but, I, but I, my most important point is, is that I want to say thank you uh, for having it done. Uh, that means an awful lot to uh, people who have to use the sidewalk. There's only one odd thing when I was driving here. Some person was still walking on 28, right on the corner of what, uh, um, Lowell and Lowell and 28. I don't know why, because it looked like it was paved, but uh, you know, people maybe can't break old habits. I so think it, I think it's important think to note that the police department, after the Christmas storm, went out, knocked on a lot of doors, gave some notices to encourage local business people to comply with the bylaw, and obviously it was successful. Yeah, mostly successful. Right. It, it seems that way. So, you know, I, I, I thank you. And I think that's all it would have taken from, from the uh, very, very beginning. So, uh, uh, for the sake of being repetitive, thank you. Uh, also, um, you have uh, coming up, uh, you're going to be in the need to hire some new personnel uh, at the top, the uh, fire department chief position uh, and the uh, DPW director head. Is moving on and it made me think about something about one one of the conversations that I've had in the past when I was on the board about hiring and so on and I, I'm just going to share my I'll make a brief but I'll share my that same input uh, I believe in uh, trying to find a diamond in the rough find good people that are eager to do a good job do a great job and make a name for themselves and if they're only if they work here for five years and do a great job and want to move on, I think that's fantastic. Uh, but I also think that you can get those types of people at a, a reasonable cost. Uh, the big argument that I recall uh, in the hiring the last DPW director uh, and some other positions was, if we want good talent, we have to pay for it. And if we want them to stay, we have to pay for it. And I think what's happened here is the opposite in this case. The economy is booming, uh, uh, regardless of what anybody feels on, on the board or elsewhere. Uh, uh, the President of the United States has uh, m made some moves that have made this economy extremely uh, beneficial for uh, people to find work at better salaries and greater opportunities. That makes it difficult for us because uh, small towns like us uh, have restricted funds uh, and it's hard to compete at the same time to the private sector. So um, my point is, is that if you can consider uh, looking for that diamond in the rough, get the best person you possibly can and get that person at a reasonable cost, uh, that'll uh, uh, translate to a savings to the town. So thank you, thank you for listening to me. And again, have a great 2018. Thank you. 
Mr. Gilberto. May I, may I just respond on the two matters? Briefly. Selectman, sure. Selectman O'Leary identified. Uh, yes, the police department did a uh, substantial amount of enforcement associated with the December 25th storm relative to sidewalk snow removal. We have also done quite a bit of uh, outreach in terms of using our website and social media and working through the Chamber of Commerce. Um, we did have one instance of uh, being required to issue fines uh, to an establishment that did not comply. Um, but uh, overall, we did see compliance. But I, I can't stress enough, it was not without a substantial amount of effort on the part of the police department to obtain that compliance. And the uh, second item is uh, relative to the personnel, um, as is the case for any position. Uh, we advertise the position, we make the appointment uh, in accordance with the appropriation approved at town meeting. And if there's any <coughs> deviation from that, we utilize the uh, salary reserve approved at town meeting. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Schultz. Um, this is speaking regarding, Mr. Yule, regarding the sidewalk issue. There's a, a lunch workshop at the Horseshoe uh, this Thursday at noon for North Reading business owners to come and talk about the, what's going on with the statute and how it affects them and what their obligations are. So we have reached out to the business community. We're going to meet with them uh, Thursday at noon. Any business owner in North Reading is welcome to attend Thursday at noontime at the Horseshoe. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else for public comment? Well, I have one public comment. Uh, I want to thank uh, the school committee and the board of selectmen and, and the transcript, and especially Maureen, for our spirited, uh, ugly sweater contest. And uh, so we obviously, somebody sandbagged it and we lost, which I can't believe we would lose. I, I checked like the day before the closing deadline, and I think the board was up by over 130 votes. I thought so, and too. And all of a sudden, it's very suspect. there was a quantum leap on the part of the <laughs> voting and for the school committee. I, not to... Uh, again, I don't want to take anything away from the school I, I committee. No I, they did a wonderful job, and they, and I said it before, they even get dressed up. They don't dress as well as we do, so they pretty much deserve to win. Steve, but, but, yeah, yeah. I, I, I <laughs> definitely think school committee won fair and square. Oh, so. <laughs> but I do want to thank everyone for participating, and I hope there was some awareness for the the neighbor helping neighbor fund. Uh, hopefully, you were able to raise some money and make some because people aware that it even existed. And that was the ultimate goal. So, I hope we achieved that. And thank you for assisting us through that. Yeah, I, I would hope that as many people that voted in this particular contest <laughs> vote in the <laughs> annual elections. <laughs> it would be nice you to see know, the town meeting. It would be good now to see, good to, good to see that many people participating in annual elections and in town oh, meeting. You can only vote once at that one. No, I don't. No, that's true, too. You can only vote once. Yeah. So, but I did make our contribution from the board. It's been submitted, and I believe it's being worked out. So, but thank you. Okay, so the first thing on the agenda is the minutes. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, can yes. I make oh, one other comment? Right. Yeah, go you right. know, that our, our uh, very able and capable secretary to the board, you know, what took a little vacation, well-deserved, and didn't bring back any warm weather with her. <laughs> I mean, that's fact, she, she, that's came, she came back and it was absolutely frigid. You know, <laughs> I was hoping so that she would, you know, drag a little bit of that warm tropical air with her, but it didn't work out that way. So. Wow. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe, too, before we move on, just take a minute to thank the DBW and all the people that participated. This last storm we had, was a, that was a significant storm. To start off the year with that a level of snow, and I know I got about 16 inches in my yard. I don't know about the rest of you. I don't care what the media says. Uh, we had a lot of snow. But I, I wanted to see if you could take a minute. My yeah, may, I, may I elaborate? Please. So it, it, and the storm was only really the most recent yeah, incident to, to tax the resources in the public safety, in the public, uh, public works department. Um, it really dates back to December 24th when we had a water break on Riverside Drive that required personnel to come in on Christmas Eve ahead of what was known to be a storm coming in on Christmas Day that was going to require personnel. And it did turn out that it did require personnel. And I know um, it, there was a bit of a surprise with the way things intensified in the snowfall late in the morning. Um, I think it caught a lot of us off, uh, off guard, but uh, they did respond and get the town cleaned up on Christmas Day. <laughs> In the ensuing cold weather um, and uh, freeze refreeze cycle, they were required to be called out on multiple evenings to uh, salt to make sure the roads were safe. And uh, between the Riverside Drive water break all the way up through this past weekend, they had, I think it was seven, uh, they were up to different water main breaks um, that uh, impacted residents to various degrees, whether they were water mains or water services on individual homes. 
and then uh, to have it you know capped off with uh, the storm that we had which was substantial they were in 4 30 in the morning on thursday and worked straight through until about two o'clock on friday morning um, enlisting contracted help um, as necessary during the course of the day and into the evening on thursday um, but they've, uh, they've done a fantastic job given some challenging um, conditions that they've been faced with this particular winter and so early on in the winter as well um, one thing I'll note also, uh, we were in uh, an emergency uh, response mode uh, with uh, a coordinated uh, operation working out of the police department's training um, room, and that was uh, participated in by police, fire, public works, schools, uh, the, and the health department as well. Uh, and the backbone, um, Jackie Studley from the DPW, who spent the, uh, the day uh, there making sure that folks could be reached uh, a lot of the calls turned out to be trash calls because of some of the uh, issues uh, were associated with the trash and recycling collection on Wednesday evening so we thank the public for their patience uh, but we were <coughs> able to get JRM back in here on Friday um, but a challenging storm at a challenging time for sure and everyone did a great job big thank you to the DPW so we're going to come back to the minutes we're going to go to the public hearing that's at scheduled for 8 <coughs> uh, Mr. Schultz if you could read the public hearing notice yes mr. chair uh, town of North Reading public hearing regarding town meeting dates the North Reading Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on January 8 2018 at 8 15 p.m. in room 14 North Reading Town Hall 235 North Street to receive public input on selecting the dates for the June and October 2018 town meetings in accordance with North Reading Home Rule Charter 2-4-1 by the Board of Selectmen. Mr. Colbert. Mr. Chairman, through you, this is a hearing required to be held pursuant to the town's charter, as Mr. Schultz just read. Um, you have in your packet a report from the town clerk who uh, annually researches the uh, scheduling of religious holidays. Um, her recommendation for, um, for this year is that the uh, town meeting in June be held on the first Monday in June as there is no religious holiday on that date. That's June 4th, 2018. In the instance of the October town meeting, there is a religious holiday that falls on the first Monday uh, being October uh, 1st. October 8th uh, is a state and federal holiday, Columbus Day, so we would not be able to meet that Monday evening. Um, so the recommendation is for October 15th. Um, She's filed a note with me that you know she believes that if we were to go forward with the date on October 1st, we would be um, potentially at risk for a challenge based on the fact that there is a religious holiday that shows up on the calendar for that date uh, for those of the, um, the, the Jewish faith. Um, and that uh, it may be necessary for us to get a special act to validate the actions of that October town meeting. And so after my discussion with her, um, I'll also note she talked to the school department and it does appear that the Grand March will be held that Monday, June 4th, the same evening as it is every year and then it's, it is going to be held at the high school. So something for us to be aware of. Uh, but based on all of that information, um, our recommendation is that the board vote to approve the town meetings for June 4th, 2018 and October 15th, 2018. Um, a side note on October 15th, having that date, it gives us a little bit more breathing room from having certified free cash and planning going into the town meeting, and it takes some of the crunch off of that week of Labor Day when we ordinarily are required to sign the warrant and get it posted. You know, I've been, I've been a big believer. I, when we changed from April town meeting to the June, I thought it was a, a beneficial move, and I think we've seen some benefit from doing it. But I also felt when we did that, we should have reconsidered our October town meeting and moved that out as well. And is there a limit on how far we can move it out? Um, there's a few things that are on there. I think it, mm -hmm. under the charter, it needs to be held in October, if I understand it correctly. Yep. And I think the options are Mondays and Thursdays. Um, if I, and again, I'm speaking from memory, really off the cuff, to be honest with you. Um, one of the problems we run into is planning for the, the tax, um, tax recapitulation that takes place in the month of November. So I wouldn't want to run into that as an obstacle. I think we've kind of found the, and again, I'm kind of looking to the finance director, but I think that date of October 15th is our best uh, responsible recommendation for scheduling at this point. Um, I think if we were going to look to permanently schedule it for another time, we'd want to have further discussion with other folks other than myself and the finance well, director. I do think it's time to re make, at least have a conversation about changing October's my meeting mm -hmm. and pushing it off a couple weeks into October. It's just so quick after June town meeting, we mm -hmm. get to the first Monday in October, so quick. It, it doesn't seem like we're... I'm not saying we're not prepared, it just doesn't give us enough time to get the full value of October town meeting and the information we need. So mm -hmm. I thought maybe we could use this opportunity to push it to something like the 26th or the 29th, excuse me, of October. But 
maybe too a little bit too late in the month, I'm not sure, maybe the week before uh, instead, but the 22nd. I have embedded, uh, you know, those dates. I mean, it's, and ultimately, it's the board's determination um, in terms of what date to pick, but our, our recommendation is the 15th at this point. Well, I'd like to push it out one more week to the 22nd. I don't think there's any harm in doing it. I think it actually gives us a little more opportunity to get prepared and actually maybe even capture some other business that we may not normally be able to do because it's so quick after June. I mean, I, I just can't see the harm in going one more week. Take advantage of it. Board members, do you disagree? The one thing I would point, I remember it was last year, I think when I was, or when I was campaigning for this seat, some members of the Jewish faith were, had some concerns that there was a conflict, I think, on a past meeting with Yom Kippur. So I just want to, and I know, I just want to make sure we're not, I know we're not, but I want to make sure that their concerns were addressed, that we're not putting these things on any kind of religious holidays. So two years ago, we opted not to schedule the town meeting for the first Monday of October for just that reason, there right. was a religious holiday. And there is one again on the first Monday, which is a reason for the recommendation for the 15th. You know, looking at the calendar, I don't see anything with regard to the, to the 22nd on the calendar um, in terms of a conflict. I on just think it gives you an extra week to prepare and maybe you get some other business done. Mr. Masseri. My understanding was that we were to do this review <clears throat> when there was a conflict on the scheduled dates and that we had an obligation to schedule the meeting as soon as we could, as close to the date that we were moving. I think that, you know, past experience, I understand that the first Monday in October has been a problem as a result of the fact that there's a certain lead time associated with getting prepared for town meeting. We go through the summer, we go to a reduced schedule, and then we're running around. Uh, I wouldn't change it past the middle of October, though, because then you've got the tight rush on the other end <coughs> to get the town meeting approved, the votes approved, to get the tax rate set, and a whole bunch of other things. So uh, and I'm not looking I to would, push a button. I would tend to support the 15th day. That's my own opinion. Okay. <coughs> I'm not going to support it, but that's fine. Anyone else? Any opinions? If not, we'll miss yeah, them. Okay. I'm good with the 15th also. I mean, and I think that also, usually it's the last week, the week of August as far as filing warrant articles. We generally, when it's held the first week of October, October, we sign the warrant the first week of September, which is the Labor Day holiday. Right. And that, that can be a challenge. Right. You know, I think the 15th works. Um, Moves it out two weeks. Yeah. Which is actually a couple of weeks out. Any other discussion? All right. We'll take a oh. motion then. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, so I'm looking at my email with it. I thank the, bar, the, the, the town clerk for, for paying attention. She's reminding me that the October town meeting must be held on the first available Monday that is not in conflict with a religious holiday, which would make it be the 15th. So thank you to the That's town That's statutory? Clerk. Uh, I believe it's under the town bylaw, yes. Bylaw or charter. Yeah. There's a charter provision that requires a hearing and a bylaw that requires a scheduling. Okay. Which we should maybe perhaps should look at if we want to try to push it out for sure. Well, if no one else believes that it's an issue, and I mean, I see it as an issue. I, I think October 1st, first Monday in October is way too soon after June town meeting. I, I see it as an issue. I do. But it doesn't sound like, it sounds but, like I'm on an island by myself. Well, you, we so. may need to propose some sort of a bylaw or charter change in order to do that. Yeah, but if, I'm not necessarily disagreeing with you, but okay. You know, I think we're restricted as to what we have to. Would do. the board be willing to then consider it for a future at the October 15th town meeting? Maybe. Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe when we have our, <laughs> our strategic planning session for next year, okay. maybe we we'll put it as a topic to have a discussion on. Okay, yep. how about that? Sounds good. Okay, then I'll be in agreement with what the dates we have then. Okay, I'll motion. take a motion. Mr. Chairman, in accordance with the Town of North Reading Charter 2-4-1, I move to set the dates for the 2018 town meetings as follows. The first one will be June 4, 2018, and the second one will be October 15, 2018. Second. I have a motion to second. Any more discussion? No. None hurt. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Minutes. Go back to the minutes of December 8th. 2017 for regular session in the executive session. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the December 18, 2017 regular minute session, regular session minutes as written. Second. 
And any, I got a motion and a second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the December 18, 2017 executive session admittance as written. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Okay. Next is uh, the Cable Advisory Committee. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, just before we, uh, the Cable Advisory Committee and the negotiating team have a, an agreement in principle uh, with Comcast, Comcast at this particular point. Uh, we were scheduled to have a, uh, the Cable Advisory Committee was scheduled to have a meeting last week, but snow got in the way and a water main break. Uh, other than that, we're all set and ready to go. Uh, so the Cable Advisory Committee is uh, scheduled to meet Wednesday evening uh, to make a formal recommendation uh, for the board's consideration uh, at our next meeting. So okay. it'll be the 22nd. So 22nd. So. We're going to move this But up there is an agreement in principle. 22nd. Okay. Thank you. So we're basically we're going to pass over this. Yep. Okay. Legal bills for November. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve legal bills for November 2017 in the amount of $15,360.46 as follows. Coltman and Page PC General, $9,838.46. Coltman and Page for Labor, $4,370. And Thompson West Publishing, $1,152 for a grand total of $15,360.46. Motion, do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Mignopelli. Any discussion? Not her. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. Okay. Appointments for the library, trustees, <coughs> and the Board of Appeals. The library trustees? Yes. So as I had asked the board to hold off on the uh, filling the the uh, second uh, opening. Uh, I have I've been in contact with the library trustees uh, chairman and uh, discussed recommendations. And uh, at this point, uh, I will be recommending uh, Geraldine Basile to fill the main position. Bless you. And so I don't have to come back and talk about the associate member, this one associate position opening. Yes, sir. And I would uh, recommend that the board. Uh, Appoint Michelle Muller to the associate position. Okay. If, uh, any other comments, Mr. Masseri? If not, we'll take a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to place in the nomination the following names for appointment as member of the Library Trustees for a term to expire on December 31, 2020, and it's uh, Mr. Ellen Vasile. Be roll. You, you got, a get se got a second? Second. Okay. Uh, motion to second. Put both more? names in nomination? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So we're, we're doing one position. Right, so it'll be a roll call vote. Okay. Mr. Masseri. Uh, Geraldine Vasile. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, Geraldine Vasile. Mr. Schultz. Ms. Vasile. Mr. Minipelli. Geraldine Vasile. And the chairman votes for Mrs. Vasile. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to place a nomination the following <coughs> name for appointment as an associate member of the Library Trustees for a term to expire on December 3, 2020, and there's one opening. And that's Ms. Michelle Mullet. Okay. And I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second, second by Mr. O'Leary. I mean, Mr. Mr. Masseri. Any more discussion? None heard. Mr. Masseri. Michelle Mullet. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, Michelle Mullet. Mr. Schultz. Michelle Mullet. Mrs. Mignopelli. Michelle Mullet. And the chair votes for Mrs. Mullet. Board of Appeals. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I had an opportunity to speak with the chair of the Board of Appeals yesterday at length and um, to go back a step, one of our uh, applicants, there was an issue with him being on a, a, another board and I'll defer to a town administrator. I know we got an opinion from Colton and Page on that issue. Mr. Chairman, through you, I'm not sure that there was an issue. I think it was more just a, a desire to make yeah, sure that there was no sure. legal issue with making the appointment. That, that was, I'm not aware that there was a specific issue. Okay. And I spoke to Mr. Paul Lear, the chair of the, the ZBA. He, he was concerned uh, not about uh, Mr. Bellavance personally, just that 
the fact that he was on a planning board and other similar boards, there could be a conflict there. I did explain to Mr. Again, I'm going to say Paul there, not to confuse with my colleague to my left, um, that we did run it by town council. They didn't feel there was a conflict. But I think given the fact that there, the chair of the Zoning Board of Appeals has this concern, um, what I, was my recommendation too is I'm going to reach out to each and every person on this list. I've reached out to everybody. I've only heard back from half of them so far. Uh, and find out who basically is the strongest applicant and make the decision accordingly. So you want to pass this over? I think I'd like to pass it over to the next meeting if need be, if possible, yes. That's fine. License renewals. Uh, Mr. Uh, common Victualler, Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following Common Victualler license to expire December 31, 2018, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Now would be Dairy Queen. Second. I have a motion. I have a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? I like Dairy Queen. Me too. Mr. Schultz came up with a new ice cream for that. Moment. The Cyclone Bomb. Cyclone Bomb. Named after the last one. Royalties, you know. Yeah, I know. All right, any more discussion on that? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Now you can go to the Dairy Queen. Uh, common Victor Wine and Malt Beverage. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following Common Victor Wine and Malt Beverage license to expire December 31, 2018, subject to all regulatory department requirements. And that's Mario's Ristorante. Second. I have a motion. I have a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. I think there's one more? Yeah. I have it here in my... Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following automatic amusement <coughs> device license to expire December 31, 2018, subject to all regulatory department requirements, and that's sports, spirits, and steaks. A motion. Do I have a second? Second by Mrs. Minupelli. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Okay. A1 Auto Sales, 144 Main Street. The discussion is to vote to schedule a um, suspension and revocation hearing. Mr. Gilberto. Mr. Chairman, if it's okay with the board members for the edification of the public, I'm going to read from the memorandum that I placed in the packet today for the board relative to this matter, relative to A1 Auto Sales located at 144 Main Street. The agenda notes for tonight's meeting included the following information. Uh, based on information received after the agenda was published on Wednesday due to the snowstorm, the board is being asked to consider scheduling a hearing for January 22nd to potentially revoke this license and to suspend the license until the revocation hearing can be held. An initial report was provided in Dropbox, uh, will, will be provided in Dropbox sometime between now and the meeting. I'm now re reading from that report. I've been informed by the police chief of the following potential violations, problems, issues at A1 Auto Sales located at 144 Main Street. Violation of license conditions limited to six vehicles with well over 20 on site and advertised for sale online. Deceptive practices, misrepresentations of vehicle condition and mileage. Violation of class two licensing statutes, including keeping accurate record books on premises for inspection by authorities pursuant to general law chapter 140, section 62. Obstructing or hindering authorized inspection, general law chapter 140, section 67. Failure to provide current records and misrepresenting that no titles were on premises. Multiple consumer complaints filed with the attorney general's office in 2017. And failure to post the lemon law and warranty info on vehicles for sale. Based on the above information, I recommend that the board vote to schedule a hearing for January 22, 2018 at 8.45 p.m. to potentially suspend or revoke the Class II license for A1 auto sales. In the interest of protecting the public, specifically potential vehicle purchasing consumers, I recommend the board vote to immediately suspend <coughs> the Class II license for A1 auto sales through the conclusion of the, of the hearing. More complete information will, will be presented to the board at the hearing on January 22. And Mr. Chairman, through you, we put a motion in the packet relative to this. I'm going to recommend that uh, one word be added to it, and that is um, between the words potentially and um, suspend, excuse me, 
we, before we, the words to and suspend the word immediately. So it would read and further to immediately suspend said license. Replace such potentially with immediately. Uh, no, and the last last line where it says and last further to suspend, it would say and further to immediately suspend said license. Between to and suspend in the last. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes. uh, before we proceed any further, I'd like to uh, have the record show that I will be recusing myself from any uh, discussion and uh, not participating in my way of voting uh, in any matter regarding this uh, particular license, as I have a family member that holds a Class II license, and I do not uh, wish to have any appearance of any particular conflict. Anybody else? Yes. Yeah, I just think it's important for the public to know everybody deserves due process and deserves their day to be heard before these boards. Um, so I'm a little leery of, of suspending a license right now without the, these folks present. I would state, though, I, when since this was posted as a uh, an agenda item for tonight, I did receive a call from a consumer uh, in town that bought a car from this premises that um, arguably was a lemon under the lemon law, uh, had to take the individual to court, won the case, and this very same car is still on their website for sale. Now, again, that's just a phone call I got today. If that's true, that's very disconcerting. Um, we want to make sure the public is certainly protected. I am a little leery of uh, suspending anything right now, only because they don't have an opportunity to be here and answer the charges. But I do find that a car that was found to be a lemon is back on the lot to be very, if that's true, again, if it's true, is very disconcerting to me. So just to, to note with regard to that, um, we're, we're certainly well aware and we've been, we are very deliberate and don't make this recommendation lightly to the board. Um, you know, th they are afforded the opportunity for a hearing. Um, we felt out of concern for the consumer, particularly the car buying consumer, that this was an appropriate recommendation. In terms of a remedy for the licensee, um, there may be other avenues for them to challenge a determination should the board make the determination to suspend the license now in advance of the scheduled hearing, um, the, the hearing that we're asking to be scheduled on January 22nd. Um, but that would be up to them to work with their own uh, counsel, and at that point we'd respond accordingly if we had to. But we feel strongly that this is a recommendation, but we understand, understand your concern. Mr. Goldberg, can you just explain briefly if the board, the majority of the board votes in favor of this motion that's being presented, how, how's the process work? How quick is it? How does it, they have to, they get a phone call tomorrow asking to bring it in? So, yeah, that's correct, yes. My anticipation is that they would receive a hearing notice that would have very similar language to what you see in the bullets on the report that I provided the board this evening. But how do we get the license from them immediately? The police department would go and, and uh, obtain it, either either obtain it or we would, they, we could offer them the opportunity to surrender it to the, some establishments with alcohol beverage <coughs> license have done that, where they bring it to the office. That's another option as well. And it would, be held, it would be held in safekeeping until the hearing on the 22nd when the board makes any further determination. Is there anyone else? So I'm just going to uh, state for the record that I am actually going to recuse myself from this one only because one of the employees here lives next door to my brother-in-law who lives in another town. Not that I have a conflict, but where he lives right next door to my brother-in-law, I don't want to you know, have any appearance of there being any, um, any kind of appearance of a conflict. So I'm... And we have three board members that can vote, and, uh, and I'm sure you'll do the right thing and, and handle it. This I just have a quick question. Did, did the license holder get notice that we were considering an interim suspension? Any kind of written notice go to the license holder that that was an action that we might be taking? They did not, no. I think I would, if I could comment, I would, I think I agree with uh, Selectman Schultz that we're having this hearing, if there is some sort of a, an emergency, as we were informed, we sh maybe should, if the chairman wants to call a special meeting to address it. But I think they really do need the notice and they need the opportunity to be heard. As really as damning as the information presented appears, we need to hear from them uh, on the situation. So I, I wouldn't be in favor of I'm definitely in favor of, of assigning it a revocation, suspension revocation hearing, but not in favor of a, an interim suspension unless they've been notified in advance of, that that's an action that we're going to take. Mr. Masseria. A question for the town administrator. Please. Do you recall what <coughs> their uh, past uh, history is regarding 
regarding violations. Yeah. I mean, the history with the current ownership is brief. The board approved the issuance of a license to a new uh, license holder at that location in March of 2015. Um, at that time, um, there was a uh, representation made to the board relative to the oversight, and uh, the manager of record has not changed, although some of the local involvement, I think, is not to the extent that it was initially represented. But in terms of violations, mm -hmm. uh, sitting here right now, I, I cannot say that I've regularly gotten complaints about the number of vehicles on the site. And I think part that's part and parcel to the fact that there's a fenced-in yard adjacent to it where some of the vehicles have been stored. Um, I, 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 you know, our only other interaction, I think, with them, has, other than last week, was for uh, modifying the fuel storage tanks on the, on the location. But I, I can't immediately think of any other violations up until these all came to light mm -hmm. effectively at the same point in time. So, Mrs. Mignapelli, your, rec your recommendation is to make sure I understood it clearly is you want to at least give them an opportunity to know that this is going to happen before there's a vote to take it away from them immediately and then to have a special board meeting just for this I, uh, my, motion. my thought is give them a written notice to if, if it's an immediate public safety scenario that we need to act upon then give them notice to up here so that we can hold that hearing that we're required to hold um, and hear the information. But you wrote this information to us today. Is, is, are there still 20 cars on the lot as of the time you wrote this? Uh, I have not gone down to inspect and I've not received a report on the condition. And, and while that is an important issue, it's actually the other matters that are more concerning yes, to me. Yes, of course, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So, to, if you want to have a, a special meeting for this thing, it has to be a 48 hours. That At least 48 hours. It and I think so under the law, they need a three-day the three notice. The three voting board members need to you know, make a decision if that's what you want to do. Or well, we can go ahead and vote this, and you can just vote it down, and then we just leave it to the 22nd. Well, we, we should vote to schedule the hearing for the 22nd either way. Yeah, we should definitely do that. So maybe take it as two separate motions, Mr. Chairman, uh, unless you wish to handle all of it at once seven days from now, for example. Is, yeah. is there another option where you could make a request to see if they're voluntary and we'll turn it in until the hearing? I mean, we could certainly make a request of them. Um, Based I think on the current situation, I mean, it doesn't hurt, but in the meantime, go ahead and go through the process of scheduling a, um, a special board meeting but maybe they'll voluntarily bring it into you based on, you know, as good stewards to try to rectify this issue. Uh, maybe they will do it in this area. I mean, we, we faced this kind of an issue a number of times with some of the other yeah. used car lots. And it seems like we've waited and had our meeting with them. And I think that's what we should continue to do here treat everybody the same well I just think the severity now of that what doesn't mean we can't we, we shouldn't go faced. and say hey you, you know you're in violation it would serve you good to make those adjustments prior to the public hearing now the issue that uh, Andrew brought up I had never heard of before and you know I mean that's that's a little different issue and you know, they could turn around and say well yeah it might have been looked at as a lemon but we brought it back and we completely went through it and it's now been repaired and it's up for sale again and it's just a call I, I have no yeah no, Robert's no, I phone call I ever seen I understand yep. so I guess uh, I, I'm of the opinion we should uh, just put them on notice that they've got to reduce the number of cars that they're selling in the lot for the permit and that they there's a public hearing to determine whether or not to take their license away it's on our regular scheduled meeting next two weeks from now. Did the everybody need a special meeting just for them? Okay. Did everybody read read the uh, the meeting packet? What was provided in the meeting packet? Mm -hmm. The yeah, letter. Yeah, for me. Okay. 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 Mr. Chair, I'm very troubled by the allegations that I've read. But I'm also very troubled by the lack of notice. And I do think procedurally, our whole legal system is based on a opportunity, notice and opportunity to be heard. Uh, you know, I just think 
they're going to have to really convince me when they come in. Don't get so. me wrong, based on what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing. But I think they do have an opportunity to be heard. And I'm just nervous. I think we're setting ourselves up for liability if we just. I don't think it's fair to, to them to not have if, a chance to. If I could, but I'll put the restore sure. on the spot. Just can you give me a historical perspective of situations like this, how the boards in the past have handled it? I've never participated. But no, <laughs> but I, that's why I'm asking from a historical perspective. Generally, a, a hearing was set. I don't ever recall a, uh, a license being suspended without a hearing. Okay. So you've never, never seen it immediately suspended? No. <clears throat> But That's it fine. also, I understand the perspective because it also <coughs> describes, I mean, inter, interfering with an inspection of getting information. Uh, have there been others? No. I, I don't recall. To your I don't recall that those allegations being as severe. But I don't ever recall the board suspending a license immediately without a hearing. It's not something that until this memo was really on my radar, this is the first time it's come to come to my attention. I haven't received any complaints like my <coughs> colleagues, but I think we need to have them in and have a, that hearing okay. to, so, to address it. So I, I think the town administrator's recommendation is a good one then. If Mr. Schultz, if you could structure the yeah. Motion, so it's in two motions, or we'll just do one motion. Um, I think we can do one. Regarding A1 Auto Sales, Mr. Chairman, I move to schedule a hearing for January 22, 2018 at 845 p.m. to potentially suspend or revoke the Class two license of A1 Auto Sales. Second. We have a motion. We have a second by Mrs. Bignapelli. Any more discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Well, oh, can sorry. you read the motion again? I'm sorry. Yeah, the yeah, motion is just to schedule a hearing on January 22nd. Okay, motion was seconded by Mrs. Mignapelli. Any more discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And abstentions? Aye. Two. Mr. O'Leary and Mr. Prisco. Okay. Next order of business Town Administrator's Report. My feet are freezing, so I'm glad we're moving right along. <coughs> <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, through you. Just a friendly reminder to our residents that uh, Christmas tree collection is scheduled to occur this Saturday, January 13th. Trees must be unbagged and curbside by 6.30 a.m. on Saturday morning. Uh, I wish to thank Representative Brad Jones and Senator Bruce Tarr for obtaining speedy approval of the town's special act validating the actions of the October town meeting. I approved a copy of the special act which was signed into law by the governor uh, a couple of weeks ago. The uh, Butters meeting regarding their construction of a sidewalk on Haverhill Street from Foley Drive to North Street has been rescheduled to this Thursday, January 11th, 2018, in room 14 at Town Hall at 6 o'clock p.m. And uh, I indicated that we'd provide an update relative to snow and ice removal expenses to date. Um, I see the finance director is there, and not to put her on the spot, but could you relay what our munis records at least indicate at this moment? Um, and that does not inc include really probably any costs associated with the Thursday storm um, being provided, as well as the delivery of salt that I believe was going to cost about $40,000 that was due in on, I think, Friday. So, so quick question. Uh, yeah, when we have these water main breaks related to this cold, that doesn't fall under this at all, right? That's correct. It would be uh, overtime out of the, uh, the water department. Budget. Except for the sanding, maybe the ice sanding that's related to the water, does that come out? Uh, it depends on what the response is. I mean, if they, generally they've already been out salting in other areas anyway, so it's probably it's probably mixed a bit. But if there were a dedicated response where they had to come up with salt or sand purely associated with that, then I would assume it would not be. Thank you for explaining. To date, we have expended seventy-six thousand six hundred and five dollars. But as the town administrator stated, um, we have not paid out anything for last year, last week's storm. So. Um, overtime or um, for contractors and for any material. And I'm, I'm not sure that that number includes the overtime or contractors on the Christmas Day storm either. Talk from talking to the Public Works Director, they may not have been submitted yet. Uh, I believe it would include the overtime. Okay. For sure, the overtime for our employees. Um, the contractors, I'd have to check to see what the last date was that sure. we um, paid them on. 
Mr. Messier. Um, and it does include the Christmas storm. It does. Okay, yes. thank you. Mr. Messier. Uh, Michael, uh, as a result of the water main breaks, uh, outside of people not having water for a period of time, has there been any physical property damage? I mean, there have been, I think, uh, a number of private locations where there's been damage inside homes due yes, to. Yes, I'm talking about the our main. Yeah, water related system. to the our water main breaks caused damage to people's homes. I, I can't think of any immediate report that I've heard of that's directly attributed to a town water main break. Um, I'm going through the six or seven locations. Um, the most significant impacts have been outages where we had to turn the service off requiring water to be turned off to multiple locations and in the case of last Wednesday this building um, but I can't I, there's no location that comes to mind where a town owned water service or water supply line has caused damage and reported uh, home damages from their own internal pipes there are a number of those that the residents have called that the fire department has been called to respond to because people have observed water coming out of the home they do their best to try to neaten things up especially if somebody's out of town for the season or otherwise mm -hmm. uh, but there have been quite a few locations where that's happened and we have uh, we do have safety tips posted on the town website relative to how to address uh, frozen pipes per, you know ideally prevent them fortunately we have some warm weather coming this week warm <laughs> at 35 and 40 degrees but uh, that, that hopefully will help, although we do think that we'll see a bit of thawing occurring where that might show some more, some more leaks. So there's some rumors around town that we had some public buildings, including the school, who had some water breaks. Is there anything sure. you want to just address to the, top, to the people in town so they know? Sure. So in terms of, the again, infrastructure not related to the town's water supply, um, we, there was a, a situation involving a uh, fire suppression line or a sprinkler system at the middle high school complex that uh, froze and then ultimately burst and caused a bit of a leak. Uh, I haven't seen the damage firsthand, but my understanding is that there was a minor amount inside, but uh, quite a bit of water that ended up outside the building. Um, so that, that was repaired. That was on Wednesday afternoon, I believe, um, and uh, that location secured, although we're kind of following through to see what steps might need to be taken to prevent that. I don't, I don't want to speak for the superintendent, but I know he's looking into it with his staff. Um, we did have uh, a troublesome uh, water service pipe that's been an issue for us in the past in the police department that did, um, that did burst as well. Again, it was not a town water supply, but it was a, a domestic water inside the building that caused some equipment damage. We're still trying to work to figure out what, what needs to be replaced, but the department's still functioning at this point, obviously. Thank you. Anything else? Um, I, I just want to note uh, the participation of a number of staff in the treasurer's office. I, I think uh, most folks who have been kind of following along know that we ended up keeping the treasurer and collector's office open late on the Friday before New Year's. So we were scheduled to close at 1 o'clock, but there was clearly a high demand of people coming into the building, and they ended up staying open until 4 o'clock uh, that Friday afternoon. And I, I just want to recognize, um, first, uh, Interim Town Administrator Mike Murphy, who's a police chief who worked with the staff to try to come up with a game plan. Um, Mary Ann McKay, the treasurer and collector, who um, was here and stayed until 4 o'clock. Um, and um, a few of the staff here in the department that stayed, including uh, Jessica O'Brien, uh, Maureen Carrero, and uh, Kayla Reynolds. Did I get Kayla's last name correctly? No. Can you correct me so I get it correct? <laughs> so I want to I want to thank them though for for staying um, staying late on Friday to provide a service for the taxpayer. Uh, and what it resulted in was a, an estimated 80 to 100 taxpayers coming into the building after one o'clock when it would normally have been closed to um, basically prepay their taxes for the balance of the year in order to take advantage of a potential benefit um, still available to them under the federal law that would no longer be available on January 1st. And so, I, again, I just want to say um, thank you to the staff for doing that. Okay. Mr. O'Leary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Happy New Year to my colleagues and community as, as a whole. Um, I, I was going to um, also mention the uh, Treasurer Collector's Office and uh, the public service that they provided. Um, and allowing the office to remain open so that people could participate and uh, take advantage of uh, prepaying their, their real estate taxes. Again, the uh, unfortunately, the short notice as a result of the um, legislation that Congress enacted you know, just before Christmas and the President signed created a, uh, a tumultuous uh, set of activities, a flurry of activities, not just here in North Reading, but 
across the Commonwealth and across the nation. And, uh, you know, I, I know that, you know, I contacted a lot of my clients, you know, a tax preparer, uh, to take advantage of it. I mean, it could mean up to $1,000 for a lot of people if they prepaid their real estate taxes. And I guess from a cash flow standpoint, it helps the town a little bit, but uh, uh, reduce the number of uh, collections that have to take place in February and May. But if you think about it, you know, you had a 80 to 100 residents in the town of North Reading uh, after the reverse uh, code red uh, call come in and take advantage of it. So I, I think uh, you know, the administration, uh, certainly the, uh, the staff and the treasurer collector's office really did provide a tremendous uh, public service uh, to the community in allowing people the opportunity. Additionally, uh, people were made aware that they could pay online up until the 31st, uh, and it did count. Um, towards uh, the payment of taxes in the previous calendar year, which will help them in their taxes. So uh, tremendous public service that was offered um, on short notice, and uh, glad to hear that uh, so many people took advantage of it. Uh, not so happy for the personnel in the uh, finance office, treasurer's collector's office, that were busy all week uh, with people uh, coming in uh, prepaying their taxes. So. I think that's indicative as to, you know, what we're here for. We're a public service organization. I think that was a clear indication and example of uh, the services that we can provide and react to uh, certain situations on, on short notice. So uh, congratulations to them and uh, thank them very much. Um, I just want to mention that uh, a gentleman passed away this week, Mr. John Canavan. Um, if you've been around town for, for a little while, you know the Canavans. I mean, he had nine children. He and his wife, Millie, uh, had nine children, and a number of them are still living in the town of North Reading. Um, a wonderful family, and again, uh, through the years, particularly the 70s and the 80s, uh, both John and his wife, Millie, uh, contributed a significant amount of time, effort, and energy uh, in volunteering for various, uh, various town boards and committees, and uh, also being very active in athletic boosters. Uh, the uh, Uh, the, the PA system and uh, press box at the, at the football field is actually named after Billy Canavan. Uh, but John, again, uh, I called upon him probably 35 years ago or more uh, and asked when I was moderator to, uh, to serve on the finance committee. He did. He was on several building committees uh, you know, with nine kids, uh, both people working, uh, still found enough time to contribute to the community and uh, was Sorry for uh, his family's loss, but he had 92 years, uh, lived a good long life, raised a wonderful family, and uh, condolences to the family, and we're grateful as a community for, for his service. Uh, and then just a footnote in relation to uh, what's happening tonight in the city of Lynn, as far as uh, you know, terrible uh, fire with 18 units and a, and a building on fire in, uh, in Lynn, and uh, to the firefighters, and again, it's just a Again, eye-opening again as to you know what we ask of our public uh, safety personnel uh, to do when they're out there fighting fires and uh, very cold weather and uh, trying to contain it. So uh, hopefully uh, those people who are displaced uh, find some shelter quickly. And uh, again, just an appreciation for not only our local firefighters, but again, the ability to have mutual aid with other communities because they're relying on that too is a good thing. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I already talked about Jane. I'm all done. Thank you. Mr. Masseri. I, I'd first like to uh, uh, thank the entire board for all the efforts of last year and the accomplishments. <coughs> and, uh, you know, look forward to working with everybody to meet the challenges of 2018 the year 2018, and uh, as we uh, move forward to prepare our budget for fiscal 2019. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with everybody, and I think uh, we should be proud of everything that we've got done. And uh, your leadership as Chair Michael, uh, well Thank deserving you. the recognition. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Town Administrator, uh, it appears that trash collection is spiraling down in terms of, uh, and I, I really thank you for uh, getting 
the word out. And, uh, I think you put something on the community connection. I know you did, I did. Uh, I'm gonna because talk about of it. all the complaints that were coming in associated with it not being picked up. And I understand the weather and everything, but it seems like over the past six months, there's been more and more of things being missed. And uh, I'm just thinking that it's time to start to, if we haven't already, turn the heat up, see if we can come up with some other approaches so that, uh, you know, I've, I've heard the story of, about the long wait uh, to empty the trucks and, you know, all of the potential issues on El Cola that has an impact on diesel vehicles, and so on and so forth. But uh, I think that uh, we got to get them to do a better job. And I guess when we know there are issues, getting the word out is very helpful too. Especially, you know, when there's snow on the roads and everything, you don't need trash floating around the town on top of it all. So I, I thank you for helping uh, in uh, getting the word out when we on that. But I also at the same time say we got to turn the heat up on JRM and come up with a solution to uh, turning around the path that we're on. Outside of that, uh, again, Happy New Year to everybody. And uh, I look forward to uh, a very successful calendar 2018. Thank you. Uh, you had a follow-up on what Mr. Mosseri said. To all the folks out there that reached out to, to me and all of us on the board about the trash issues, it's not lost on us, and we will do what we can to rectify that situation. Also, as we discussed earlier, Thursday at noon for any North Reading business owner, we're going to have a workshop at the Horseshoe to discuss the storm removal issues. And this Saturday was a great time. I had an opportunity to go to the North Reading Boy Scouts Troop 750 Eagle Scout uh, induction ceremony. And we have five, or excuse me, four outstanding young men in our town. I want to give them a recognition. It was Joseph Gonthier, Connor Gover, Thomas Lasden, and Scott Valente all received their Eagle Scout badge. That's a very high honor. And, you know, the, the Eagle Scouts at represent everything that's good about our town, our commonwealth, and our country. And those are four outstanding young men. I congratulate them and their parents who obviously raised great kids. And uh, it was a very nice um, ceremony. And I was honored that they allowed me to attend. So it was really nice. And I just want to say thank you to police, the fire, the DPW for the there's been a lot going on, not just with the storm, but with the emergency response, the rollovers, the accidents that have occurred, and, and um, you know, for people that still had to be out during that treacherous time, and, and, um, and also just say Happy New Year to everyone, and let's hopefully keep the momentum moving. We have a lot of things to keep moving forward on, and, and also congratulate you, Mike, for the past year, too, and your leadership this past um, several months on the board. Hope we can Good keep moving effort. forward. Anything else? Uh, just wanted to follow up a little bit more on the trash. And it kind of goes along with what was said earlier about all our public safety and uh, public boards and committees and our employees. You know, this has been, I think, one of the coldest stretches I can remember in my lifetime. And, and it's difficult. You know, these guys that are doing our trash, I think we have to have a, just a smidge more compassion. I know it's a little frustrating for our residents, but, you know, those trucks have a lot of issues in the cold. And those employees that are on the back when they have to drive, you know, they can't get through the route sometimes in a day just because it's just too, too, too cold. And it does take them a couple days. And I'm just asking for, the pa for some patience with the public. Um, and know that we are addressing it. And this board, as you know, when we met on the... Uh, was the last meeting we last had in December. Meeting. We have some decisions to make, and I know that's going to come before us again. 22nd. The 22nd. And we are going to have change, okay? We will have change. But in the meantime, between now and then, I'm just going to ask the, the, the residents to just try to have some compassion and understanding <coughs> that these are human beings that are out there. They're cold, and they're doing the best they can. And when we get a storm with, you know, over a foot of snow and, we're trying to do the right thing by having you know, the trash managed so it doesn't get stuck into a snowbank for until we get back to spring. Um, and so if everybody could just pay a little compassion, a little more patient, 
Uh, I promise you we're addressing it. It hasn't gone overlooked, and we're going to get there. Uh, and again, a nice uh, thank you to the Treasurer's Department for stepping up. And it was much appreciated by many residents in town. I did get a lot of nice phone calls and messages thanking you for that. Uh, the housing partnership, Mr. O'Leary, if you could do me a favor and help me out. PB Court, and I talked to the town administrator about it, but I think we just got to become a little more aware of when we have a snow removal situation with this large snow, what's the policy and procedure? Who's the contractor? Because things over there didn't get shoveled off. I received a lot of phone calls and messages. I think it's getting addressed now, but I just, people listening at home, we, you know, it's being addressed. And I don't want anyone in town to think that we don't care about PPD court, especially when the snow comes down. There's a lot of hills up there. There's a lot of sidewalks. There's a lot of stairs. Things did not get shoveled off. And, uh, but we're addressing it. And I just want Mr. O'Leary to be aware of it because um, it just came up. And um, so if you could maybe touch base with the other I'm aware as to what, what, what's supposed to occur. I, I know we, we, we plow the, the entryway in you know, a little cul-de-sac and out the DBW does. But as far as uh, the uh, shoveling of walkways and stairways, the housing authority generally hires uh, people to do that under their budget, which is a state authorized but not the town so uh, generally it comes out of the executive director's uh, purview to ensure that they have adequate resources to to clear it appropriately you know so, so as of they, yesterday there were still stairs with lots of snow on them yeah. unshoveled i mean for again for years for as long as i remember the, in the housing authority executive director handles the shoveling of the walkways and the stairs and Sometimes they hire kids and other personnel. That they have, I think, one handyman, basically, on staff. But they hire other people to, uh, to come and assist. So if it didn't get done, uh, and again, it's under their state and federal monies, yeah, not the town appropriations. No, I know. But if there was a point of contact that we had to just maybe make and a again, call. In the past, there have been other efforts made and uh, some assistance given by you know volunteers, kids in the high school going and help shovel it out also. But that would be good. Could be but good. I mean, that has happened in the past, but I don't know how recently. Okay. But I just wanted the, the public to know that we're addressing it and we're trying to get it elevated. I know, Michael, thank you for, I know amongst everything else you were doing, you did make some time to look into it, even though I know it is under the state's control. But we got to make sure we, at least a voice for them. Sure, and just in lockstep with that, um, I, my understanding is that they, they had a challenge with uh, some equipment that they had on hand, which delayed things. And of course, they also had the complication of the wind blowing into, into the day on Saturday, which um, any work that was done, I think there was some, some progress. They made some progress and then it went backwards on them because of the, the blowing <laughs> like snow. But the commitment I got from the executive director was that they were aware of it and they were taking steps that they believe would resolve it. So, but thank you for calling it to our attention. Mr. That's Chairman, all. just to echo yeah. your remarks in relation to the trash, uh, you're right on our target as far as be having showing a little more compassion to the uh, the drivers, uh, the equipment. Again, if they run on diesel, it wasn't going to well, run hydraulics. very. Hydraulics. It wasn't going to run very well. Hydraulics in three degree yeah, weather. Yeah, hydraulics it's and diesel fuel. Obviously, they're running kerosene to keep the trucks running. Uh, but for the poor buggers that are running out of the, tagging along in the back of those trucks, I mean, you know, for me, I put out two weeks worth of recycling this week. Uh, to me, the only thing that we could have improved upon was maybe the level of communication, yeah. timing of the communication. And, and again, thanks to the administration, there was, you know, uh, yep. notification uh, given. But, uh, you know, I pulled my recycling in at 8 o'clock, and they came by after 8 o'clock to pick up the recycling. So that's why I had two weeks this, this week, which was okay. But the storm was coming. Yep. But uh, to your point, again, a little more compassion for the people that are out there working hard to remove the trash and... Uh, this little bit of level of communication would be helpful. And to your point, chances are there's going to be a split time frame when it comes to trash pickup going forward. It's not all going to be a one day. Yep. So, thank you. Yep. Anything else? I, I think we have two items. The first, scheduling or confirming the date of the yes. Saturday budget hearing. And then I'm going to reread the names of the employees from the treasurer's office who stayed late on Friday at the <laughs> end <laughs> with the correct last names. I apologize. Go right ahead. Let's. Oh, okay. So uh, the, again, the town treasurer, Mary Ann McKay, uh, Maureen Carrero, Jessica O'Brien, and Kayla Gardner. So thank you to them. Thank you. Thank you. All right.
in the date that we would like to select. I think we had a tentative date of the third initially. Well, we, 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 we had a tentative date. We had, we had a budget schedule that we published in November for February 24th. However, we got some feedback from the board that it seemed like that Saturday might not work. Right. And we were looking at potentially moving it to the next Saturday, which I believe is March 3rd. And I talked, looking to the finance director, uh, I believe that we don't know of any major obstacle to that date working. Um, the third or the 24th? The third. So if the desire is to do the third, it would appear we can do that. The 24th is still available. But we had one more board member, I think. Mr. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be around, yeah. That's school vacation week, the 24th. The 24th, so yeah. I know missing that one week makes it a little more challenging for you in the timeline, but if we can stick to the third, I think then it accommodates school vacation and because I, I'm sure some of the department heads that have to attend that day, well, it's not gonna be many <laughs> that exist today, so. Um, is we, are we okay to stick with the third? Any conflicts? You're okay? You're not going away anyway? Are you now booking your trip? You won't be available the third day. No. You're just waiting to find out. <laughs> I guess. Okay, we're on to you. <laughs> leaving the second. Half. You're leaving on the second. Half, yeah. All right. The third it is at eight thirty. At eight, is it, isn't it? Is it eight or eight thirty? We usually it's start at eight. We start at eight o'clock. Oh, I'm going to change. I would have been a half hour late. Okay, eight o'clock, and breakfast will be served. We usually have a pastry or some sort of coffee here. Yeah. Public's welcome to attend. Yes. In the couch, so. Yes. In this room? In this room. In this room. We'll have the heat on. By then, we're going to be... We'll turn on the night. coming room. early, so it'll be toasty warm out. I, I understand this room was so cold that the Board of Health didn't need a new freezer. <laughs> for the vaccines. I want to take a motion to uh, re-enter re -enter into executive session, if we could. I'll make a motion to re-enter into the executive session for exemption three. A motion and a second. And uh, we'll return to open session for the sole purpose of adjournment. That's part of the motion. Mm -hmm. Yes. Second. As modified. Second. As modified. Okay. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Masseri. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mr. Minupelli. Aye. And the chair votes aye. We'll give a minute to break things down. A little restroom break.